Hello NASCAR fans, I'm Chris Terrell, I'm here for RotoPros.com to bring you my weekly daily fantasy NASCAR post-qualifying picks video. Before getting into the picks, if you're not a RotoPros member yet, make sure to go over to RotoPros.com, click that yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner, and this week using promo code NASCAR you can get 50% off of a weekly monthly subscription, which gives you access to all of our premium content. We cover NFL, NHL, NBA, NASCAR, PGA, MLB starting in two weeks. We cover soccer. Pretty much if there's a DFS sport out there played on DraftKings and FanDuel, we can cover it. It also gives you access to our members-only community chat. We've got a bu bunch of different channels set up here for all the different sports. For NASCAR, I've put in a couple of the top news people in the sport who follow along track to track. They're there every single week. They're in the pits. They're in the garages. They're talking to drivers. They're talking to engineers. They're talking to crew chiefs. Best way to get the most information all in one spot here in our Rotor Pros community chat. Sign up today, you're not going to be disappointed. With that, let's jump into this week's picks. This week, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series heads to Michigan International Speedway for the Firekeepers Casino 400 on Sunday afternoon. The track is a two mile D shaped oval, 18 degrees of banking in the corners, using the full 2019 rules package 550 horsepower air ducts the raised rear spoiler. It was an impound race, so the practices were on Friday. Practice 1 and Practice 2 were on Friday. Qualifying was on Saturday. Inspection came before qualifying, um, so the cars are impounded after qualifying. We don't got to worry about uh, inspections on Sunday, leading to uh, you know a delayed start in lineup, so that's good news. There are 200 laps in the race. We've got to look at the previous six winners here. So this is the track where Kyle Larson went and won three straight from the 12th, 1st, and 9th starting position. Um, as you can see, the starting position twice has come from the pole in the last six races. Um, all but uh, So you got four times inside the top 10 and twice from the 12th spot. So let's just jump in. Um, we're going to look at, as you can see actually here, with the last six races tab, we go down and look at the correlation of start to finish. So kind of like how important is starting inside the top 10. This has been one of the highest correlation tracks. I think we see a little bit different race this year just simply because of the 2019 rules package. It's going to be a little bit different than Pocono, which had um, pretty flat banking. This has got 18 degrees of banking, so I think we're going to see some more cars hook up, be able to make some runs, cars from the back, and be able to work their way forward quite easily. You're going to see some lead changes. I don't think we see a driver lead 100 plus laps. Probably see three or four lead 20 or more. Um, so I'm kind of looking for that here this week. So with that, let's jump into some core plays. So right at the top, number one in my in my model this week is Kyle Busch. Um, start in 15th, it has to be my top driver just because he's finished top 10 in all but one, one race this season. He leads all drivers in fantasy scoring, 76.3 DraftKings, 75.2 FanDuel points per race. Returns to Michigan, uh, he finished top five here both races last year, top 10 in four straight races, and while... The first practice wasn't great, uh, 11th and 21st, looking at uh, one lap and 10 lap averages. He did improve a lot going into final practice, second behind Kevin Harvick, and then 7th and 10 lap averages. And they're obviously an elite team. They're elite on pit road. They're going to be able to make the right adjustments. He's easily a top five car with winning upside here again this week. So it's going to be number one. I'm going to be looking at doing some stacking here this week. So I'm going to be looking at pairing them with uh, some with Martin Truex, which is going to be a bit tougher just because they're both in that 10K range, um, in the 12K plus range, or sorry, 14K plus range on FanDuel. A little bit easier going down to Eric Jones. I really like Eric Jones with Kyle Busch here this week, starting 14th. He showed pretty much top five speed um, all weekend. He's been great going back and, you know, looking at his season and current form. He's got two top fives, three top tens in his last six races. Doesn't lead a lot of laps. So kind of where he, you know, starting 14th made me like him just a little bit better on DraftKings this week. I do like him on FanDuel as well. He has been qualifying inside the top 10, which has kind of made him more of a FanDuel only play for me lately. So I really like him in all formats on both sites this week. And then Denny Hamlin would be third. I'm going to have probably the least exposure to him just because he didn't really show top 15 speed and he started in fourth this week. Also, this he's kind of been a little bit up and down at this track. So Hendrick Motorsports uh, would be up next for me, looking at Chase Elliott as a leader of that group, starting 17th. He's been extremely consistent here, top 10s in all six races here in his career, including runner-up finishes in his first three races here. Like Bush, he gives his place differential upside, starting 17th. 
and he wasn't great. Kind of like Kyle, again, uh, 17th and 23rd in practice one. Improved on that in final practice, 13th and 9th. But he's been so consistent lately. It's been very consistent here at Michigan. He checks all the boxes and starting 17th, he's going to be a core play, um, especially in my cash games. He's the driver I'm going to be building around um, in that format tonight for sure. Or sorry, for the race tomorrow. And then I'll be looking to pair him with Alex Bowman um, the most out of the other Henrik drivers, and then Jimmy and Byron a little bit there as well. I like their prices in the sub-8K range on DraftKings. So Stuart Haas Racing is up next. They have been extremely consistent all weekend with their practice speeds. It starts with Kevin Harvick. He's only ninth in my model. Um, just looking at uh, his form hasn't been great, so he's, he's kind of a more of a GPP play for me this week, especially starting third. But he, he, although he was 23rd in practice one, he was fourth in the 10 lap averages, and then he led final practice and was fourth again in the 10 lap averages. So I do think he does have a, a top five car winning upside. Probably his downside, you know, barring a crash or technical or mechanical issue, he's probably around a 10th place car um, on the downside. So definitely looking at him for GPP. Clint Boyer more for GPP just because he's more expensive than Al Marola and Suarez this week. But Boyer was excellent through practice. Second and first in practice one, third and eighth in practice two. Um, he won this race two years ago. It was a rain-shortened race, so he's been very up and down here at this track. So definitely looking at him as a GPP only play in that range. And then Eric Almarola at 8,100 on DraftKings, 9,500 on FanDuel. Starting second, showed a ton of speed in final practice, top five speed. I like him a lot more on FanDuel this week. And then Suarez, I think he's cheap enough where we can kind of look at his um, not great track record, track history here at Michigan. Um, I thought he was going to qualify inside the top five, and he was going to be just pretty much a GPP play only. Starting ninth, I'm definitely willing to consider it. He has only one top ten in his last six races overall this season, so that kind of has me wonder. But, again, he was first and sixth in practice one and then fourth and first um, in practice two. So he's showing short run speed. He's showing long run speed. Uh, it looks like he's got a really good car, and I think those Stuart Haas cars are going are gonna to hook up. Um, together there as well. When Boyer won two years ago, I think uh, Stuart Haas finished one, two, three. So I think they're going to be strong here again this weekend. And then looking at some value plays this week, Chris Busher is one that stands out as my favorite. Low 7K range on both sites. Starting 31st is what really um, stands out here. He was 20th and 10th in practice one, 24th and 22nd in practice two. So although practice two wasn't quite as good as he showed at practice one. It's still a lot better than his starting position, so I think he gives us enough place differential value there um, at those prices where he makes an excellent value play. And he's finished 24th or better here at Michigan in three straight, including a sixth in the race here in 2017. So definitely looking at Busher as my top value play. I have a lot of exposure to him this week in all formats. And then for GPP, my second favorite value play is going to be Matt DiBenedetto. Gives us some place differential value. He started in 29th this week. He was 25th and 15th in the first practice, then 20th and 20th in the second practice. So showing much more speed than his starting position. And he's finished better than this starting position here in three of his last four races. So if you are a DFSR or Roller Pros member, um, be sure to grab your members only copy. It's going to have a few more plays attached to it. Um, you'll find that in either of the chat chat rooms there. If you have any questions, you can hit me up in those chat rooms as well. Leave a comment below in this YouTube video or hit me up on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs nine. And with that, let's go make some lineups. Let's get some green screens. Good luck this week, everyone.